One of the key factors of an aesthetic physique is the V-taper, broad shoulders that taper down into a tight waist. Unfortunately, most guys have the opposite body shape, narrow shoulders and a wide waist. In order to build a V-shaped body, there are three major areas that you want to develop. Your back, particularly the lats, the shoulders, mainly the mid-delts, and the waistline. Essentially, we want it to become or appear smaller. For the first two, it's going to require that you build muscle mass in specific areas. But for the third one, burning belly fat and tightening up your waist will come down to nutrition. So before we cover the three best exercises for a V-taper, let's first talk about how to burn your abdominal fat and achieve a tighter midsection. Simply put, if you want to lose fat, you're going to have to be in a caloric deficit, meaning you're burning more calories than you're consuming. Here's a simple way to do it. Take your body weight in pounds and multiply it by 10 to 14. For example, if you weigh 180 pounds, multiply that by 14 to get 2,520. Now your initial daily calorie intake would be about 2,500 calories. However, this is simply a starting point and intake will need to be adjusted over time. If 2500 calories fails to cause weight loss or ceases to put you in a caloric deficit, then simply decrease your intake by 100 to 250 calories or increase physical activity by adding a bit of cardio. Also, make sure you eat around 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight each day to preserve and build lean muscle mass. For example, if you weigh 180 pounds, aim to consume 180 grams of protein per day. Now that you have a basic understanding of how to shed belly fat and tighten up your midsection, let's jump into the top 3 exercises for building a V-taper. Exercise number 1 weighted pull-ups. Because they primarily train the lats, pull-ups are one of the best movements for achieving the coveted V-taper. To perform this effectively, start with a medium grip slightly outside of shoulder width. From a dead hang, lean back slightly and puff out your chest. Now initiate the lift by depressing your shoulder blades. This will activate more of the lats. From there, pull your elbows towards your sides. If you feel it mostly in your biceps, you're probably doing it wrong. I like to imagine there's a string pulling your elbows down while the hands are just hooks to connect you to the bar. Once you're able to perform bodyweight pull-ups with relative ease, graduate to the weighted pull-up. The great thing about weighted pull-ups is that you can safely load them in a variety of rep ranges. If you want more of a pump, you can do sets of 10. If you want to focus more on strength and progressive overload, you can comfortably do sets of 5. It's important to note that if you can't do at least 8 or so body weight pull-ups with proper form, then you likely shouldn't try them with weight. Oftentimes, you'll see trainees performing partial reps or kipping up and down to complete more repetitions. The only thing this will build is the ego. If you're unable to perform the reps with proper form, choose a more basic variation like the lat pull down or assisted pull ups. Exercise number two overhead press. Although it isn't the greatest exercise for building the mid delts, which are the most important for shoulder width, the overhead press is the best exercise for loading the shoulders as a whole. And because progressive overload is one of the main pathways by which we build muscle, it's no surprise that the OHP should be a staple exercise for anyone looking to build impressive shoulders. Not to mention, the overhead press doesn't just stimulate the obvious muscle groups, for example the shoulders, upper chest, and triceps. It also helps strengthen the lats through heavy eccentric loading, engages the legs by using them as stabilizers, and of course, increases core strength. This movement, although not the most complicated, is a bit more complex than the bench press. Not just because it's easily butchered, but because your body is in an overall more vulnerable position since you have no support. A few things you want to avoid when shoulder pressing are pressing in front of your body, I call this the standing bench press, not maintaining a tight core and arching your back too much, 
not locking out the lift, this is very common in the overhead press, and too wide of a grip, which leads to flared elbows. Now, if you're looking for an overhead press variation that hits more of the lateral deltoid, you may want to consider incorporating the standing dumbbell press. One study published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research compared the standing barbell press, the standing dumbbell press, the seated barbell press, and the seated dumbbell press. They concluded that the standing dumbbell press showed the greatest muscular activity in the mid delts. That said, the barbell overhead press should still be the main focus of your shoulder training, especially for lower rep ranges. But if you want to add more volume, especially for the lateral deltoids, the standing dumbbell press is a great addition. Exercise number three, lateral raises. Of all the muscles on the body, the lateral head of the deltoid is one of the most neglected. Like I mentioned before, the overhead press will target them to a degree, but you'll need adequate volume and frequency of direct lateral delt training to achieve the best growth possible. That's why I suggest training your mid delts at least two times per week. Now although you may already be including some type of dumbbell lateral raise in your training, there are a few adjustments that can be made to ensure we are further emphasizing the mid delts. Let's look at the traditional dumbbell lateral raise for example. The further in front of the body the dumbbell is, the more involvement we get from the front delt. This is why it's imperative that we do our best to raise the dumbbell directly at our side. And even then, the front delt is still bearing a good deal of the load. This is why most experts recommend internally rotating the shoulder during this exercise as it'll further reduce involvement from the front delt. This however will put your shoulder in a vulnerable position, increasing risk of impingement, especially as you progressively add more weight. An easy way to combat this is to externally rotate the shoulder and lean slightly forward. Not only will this put your shoulders in a safer position, but it'll also shift most of the load to the mid delts. And if you want to minimize the chance of cheating and further isolate the mid delts, I recommend a chest supported variation where you're using an incline bench for support. Another issue with a traditional dumbbell lateral raise is that it has a pretty poor resistance profile. There's little to no tension at the bottom of the rep and a lot of tension from roughly 30 to 90 degrees of abduction. This rough resistance profile means that the muscle is getting targeted mostly in its shortened range and not in its lengthened range. Which is why I also recommend including some leaning cable lateral raises to further stimulate the mid delts. Because the mid delts are more involved during the end of the range of motion and less in the beginning, leaning away allows for better isolation of the mid delts while using a cable ensures there is tension throughout the entire range. So there you have it, my top 3 exercises for building the coveted V taper. Did you find this video helpful? If so, click the like button below as it will truly help out the channel. Also, if you're looking to take your workouts to the next level, grab a bottle of my science-based pre-workout supplement, Turbocharged. Packed with scientifically proven ingredients, all clinically dosed, you'll experience all the performance benefits without the jitters or crash. If you want to learn more, head over to musclemonsters.com forward slash supplements or click the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more videos and don't forget to turn on post notifications so you don't miss the next one. Peace.